this is the newspaper. Now the newspaper is full of information. Information that you use throughout your lifetime. Maybe someday the newspaper would send a reporter out to your house and they would write a story about you. And then you could rip that story out and take it to school and show it off to all your friends and say, look how cool I am, I'm in the newspaper. But if you don't know how to read, the newspaper will be of no use to you. You might not even be able to find your name in all those words if you don't know how to read. So really, if you don't know how to read, the newspaper will be of no use to you unless you want to rip it up into little tiny pieces to use as confetti. And what good is confetti if you have nothing to celebrate? And if you don't know how to read, you definitely won't have anything to celebrate. That's why it's so important to practice your good reading habits so you can read the whole newspaper. How many of you like mystery books? Yeah, I like mystery books too. But the problem is, is every time I read a mystery book, I mysteriously lose my place. So what should you do? Imagine that, me, you lose your place. What should you do so you won't lose your place? Thank you! That's right, get a bookmark. And believe it or not, I have my mystery book right here and a state. And I have down here my bookmark. Ooh, this is a great bookmark. This is my bookmark. Yay! <laughs> Just thinking a piece of rope. Actually, a piece of rope makes a great bookmark. Because if you have a big book, use a big piece of rope. If you have a small book, you just cut the end off. Ooh, good idea, good idea. I'll get my scissors, and then I'll cut the end off, and then I'll have a bookmark, and I will no longer mysteriously lose my place. So we'll just cut the end off, we'll just cut the end off, we'll just cut the end off. We'll just cut the end off. <laughs> Oh, maybe I'll saw it. It's not going to work either. Oh, what's wrong with these crazy things? Ooh, okay, now we're just cutting these out. Okay, who glued them? And all the kids usually raise their hand on this. And then I can say, ooh, great, team effort here at the Belmont Library. And so, ooh, ow. Now, finally, after all of that, I now have a bookmark, so I will no longer mysteriously lose my place. And I think I was about right there. Okay. It always seems in mystery books there's bad guys and good guys. And there's bad guys and good guys in the story that I'm reading, and they're looking for a buried treasure. And they had to cut their way through the jungle to find the buried treasure. Ooh, the scissors worked that time. But since they're bad guys, it never seems to fail that the bad guys always get caught and tied up at least one time in the story. And that's exactly what happened to the bad guys in my book. They got caught and tied up. And I, I just have to even things up. Hopefully they won't escape. But it never seems to fail that once the bad guys are caught, ooh, I'm making a mess. Doesn't matter, I still have to clean it up so it doesn't get any better as you get older, kids. Okay. <laughs> once they get caught and tied up, it never seems to fail. They always oh. escape. <laughs> And just when the bad guys have found the buried treasure, it's in some deep, dark cave. So the bad guys go into the deep, dark cave to find the buried treasure. And just when they have their greedy little hands on it, do you know what happens to it? What? what? It disappears. Ooh. And they have... Ooh. And they have to continue to read to see what happened to the bad guys, the good guys, and the buried treasure. And that's just some of the magic you can find in the books at the library. As I said, boys and girls, when you read, you use your imagination. Yes? Yes. And what's your imagination? And I get all kinds of fun answers for this one. <laughs> so when you read, you get to use your imagination. So if you're reading a story about a cow, it can be purple for all that you care. Well, how many of you have ever read the story of the secret garden? Come on, the video doesn't count. <laughs> and when you read the story of the secret garden and you're using your imagination, you can only imagine how big and beautiful, wow, the garden really was. And if you read a story about a boy named Mitch, as in the story of Rich Mitch, since you're using your imagination, you can only imagine how much money Rich Mitch had. Ooh! <laughs> Too bad it's not real. So then I end, I end my show with this trick, and I'll say, really honest, boys and girls, I really have to do read a stack of magic books. Because if I didn't know how to read, I wouldn't le learn, be able to learn how to perform magic, because every magic trick comes with a set of directions. I wouldn't be able to learn the magic words that I sometimes use, because really the magic word in my show is reading, and I introduce that magic word in a magical way at the beginning of the show. But there are other words, so you have to hire me to see that trick. <laughs> so in other words, um, abracadabra.
Dabber, everybody knows that magic word. And Sim Salabim, those are my favorite ones. <laughs> Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. Hocus Pocus reading is fun. And when you read and you use your imagination, it will appear as if the story pops out at you. Aww. And maybe you could read a story about a magician. <laughs> kind of looks like me, huh? <laughs> okay, there's magic for that, too. <laughs> Are you going to read a story about a magician who had a rabbit? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a rabbit either. He ran off and got married. Oh. <laughs> Works at Disney, says he makes more money. Oh. <laughs> and unfortunately, boys and girls, we've now come to the end of the show. Just like coming to an end of a good book. You can read it from cover to cover. You can even read it under the covers. But no matter how slow you go, just as in the magic show, you always come to... Yeah. And now it's time for me to say... Yeah. Thank you, boys and girls. Catch yourself.